Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. Thank you all for coming back and joining me. Um, I've got kind of a little heavier topic today, so I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will get started. Jesus, thank you so much for this day. Lord, we know that you are Yahweh Rapha. You are the healer, God. We know that we can come to you with anything because you are good. We trust your goodness, Lord. Open our eyes to how we can put on the armor of God so that we can stand strong in our faith, in our minds, and in our hearts, and against the enemy, Lord. I thank you for every person watching today, and I pray that they hear a word from you, Lord. It's in your precious name I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Sunday, October 10th, which was last Sunday, was Mental Health Awareness Day, and I didn't touch on it, but the kids and I were talking on the way to school, and London asked me kind of a heavy question in the morning on the way to school. She said, Mommy, do, do people that, that take their lives, do they go to heaven? That's a pretty heavy question for a 10-year-old to ask when I've only had about two sips of my coffee that morning. But I thought long and hard about it. We talked a lot about it on the way to school. And I love that we have this open dialogue where we can talk to each other about things like this. And first off, I told them, if you have heard about anyone that has said anything like this, anything about taking their life or that they're so sad that they don't want to live anymore, I said, you have to tell an adult. You have to tell an adult, a teacher, a pastor, somebody. You have to tell mommy or daddy. You can't keep it in, even if they beg you to keep a secret. I said, that that's not a secret that we keep, and we always need to tell somebody if we hear anything like that. And then I went on to say that there is nothing, nothing in this world that is worth taking your life. There is nothing that is, is too far gone. There is no trouble that you could get in that, that we would never forgive you for. I said, you can always come to mommy or daddy. We will always find a solution to any problem. And I said, there's just nothing in the world that is worth taking your life. There's nothing more important than, than you guys being here on this earth. There's nothing that we can't get through. And we talked about a little boy who is from um, Texas where we live and he had broken a Nintendo game and he was so scared he was gonna get in so much trouble that he took his life over a Nintendo game, over, over a material thing. And I just want them to know that there is just nothing in the world that they could ever do that would make us stop loving them, that we couldn't get through. So I know that we've all struggled at some point with mental health. We live in a fallen world and it's broken and it's painful and it's hard and so many things in the world can try to bring us down. Marriage, finances, addiction, abuse, neglect, keeping up with the Joneses, shame, grief, abandonment, the pandemic, postpartum. There's just so many things that come at us from all angles and sometimes it can feel like everything is piling up one after the other. If we go through a hard thing, there's another thing right behind it. Right as you feel like you're about to get back on your feet again, you get hit and knocked down again. I just wanna say, don't lose heart, don't lose hope. If you are watching this today, there is some reason that God has brought you here. This may be your first arise. This may be your 100th arise. I haven't done 100, but this may be your 60th arise. There is a reason why you're here and you have meaning and you have purpose and there's nothing that you can't get through. People like to say, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And I think he does and y'all have heard me say that, but it's not more than he can handle. So I wanna talk about that today. I kinda of wanna talk about biblical things today and also, I understand mental health is a very serious thing. And sometimes you do need professional help. You do need um, medication. You do need assistance. And so I want you to know if you are hurting, if you are extremely sad, if you are feeling like you don't wanna go on anymore, please reach out to somebody. Please reach out to a doctor, a nurse, a friend, a stranger, me. Um, just reach out because I do realize that, that sometimes you need medication and you need professional help on top of needing the word and needing Jesus and needing God to carry you through. I know personally having gone through the loss of our son and through this whole crazy pandemic, through IVF, through a miscarriage, through now having a new baby and being postpartum, I know that your hormones and your emotions and everything can just 
really take a toll on you. And I've never really struggled with, with my mental health. Um, so I don't know how deep it goes, but I do know that whenever I do start to feel anxiety or worry, or if I do start to feel sad, I immediately pray and that really, really helps me. So I kind of want to give you guys some biblical truths to help you through any season that you may be going through. The Bible says we must constantly be renewing our mind, and this is so important. We have the authority in Jesus to do just that. When you put your faith in Jesus, He resides in you. But we have to stay strong in the Word, and we have to put on that armor of God every day. We have to renew our mind because the enemy never sleeps. He is always lurking around like a lion, and he is seeking prey to find you in a vulnerable moment to just keep picking at you, keep throwing things in your mind that make you feel less than, that make you feel guilty, that make you feel shame, that make you feel sad, that make you feel depressed, that make you feel anxious about any situation. God goes before you and we do not have to live in fear and we do not have to live in anguish. Go to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God and read about who He says you are. Read about everyone in the Bible who has been in seasons of darkness and God has pulled them through. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He sees the end from the beginning. And I know while sometimes you may feel like you are in a season of darkness and you may feel like you may never get out, there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. He is working sometimes in the, in the, in the stillness, in the quiet, in the pain. He is doing his best work. I get messages all the time. Can you give me a scripture on fear? Can you give me a scripture on anxiety? Can you give me a scripture on depression? Can you give me just, a, just one scripture? And while I can, I can give you those scriptures and I'm gonna give you a few. Um, the word is our lifeline and the word is our hope. And we can't just take one scripture from the Bible and think that we can live off of that. If I can do anything, if I can encourage you, please read the whole Bible. I know it seems like a big task, but just read the whole thing. It will fill your mind, it will fill your heart. God will start to reveal himself to you. Pray about it, because we can't just cherry pick one verse that's gonna get us through life. That's not enough to sustain us through a deep season of darkness. And we're gonna face many seasons of darkness. There's not gonna be just one, the Bible says, we will face trouble, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. So I wanna give you a few verses, just a few. Guys, this is like five or six out of thousands in the Bible. So um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known made to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. John 14, 27, this is about peace. Peace is what I leave with you. It is my own peace that I give to you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid. So many times in scripture, God says, do not be afraid. Do not be anxious. Do not be upset. He will bring you through. But you have to rely on him. You have to surrender. Psalm 41 through three. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and mire, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. That one makes me a little emotional because personally I've seen Him work, I've felt Him move in my life, and I know that He can pull you out. So please don't despair. Please don't give up. Please don't lose hope. Don't lose heart. He's there listening and He's waiting. He's knocking on your door, so answer it. If you feel the pull of the Holy Spirit, answer that and He will pull you out. Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Isaiah 43.2, another emotional one. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. So God never says we will not walk through fire. God never says we will not pass through the waters. God says He will be with us. He will walk with us through it. Galatians 1.10, and this is kind of about keeping up with the Joneses. You know, there's social media and we can, we see everybody in their highlight reels and there's little boxes that look so perfect and we can feel like our life is less than. This one kind of is, um, kind of goes about comparing yourself to others. Am I trying to win the approval of men or God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't try to pretend that you're something that you're not. Don't worry about pleasing and having the approval of men or the world or of social media. Worry about pleasing God. That's all that matters. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. 
but with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. God has given you his spirit. If you are in Christ, he lives within you and he has given you a spirit to endure anything that you face in this life. And he knows it, he's felt it, he's been through it. And he, like I said, like I keep saying, he will walk, he will pull you through. Matthew 11:28. 28, come to me all who labor and who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I could go on and on with all the promises and all the scriptures in this book. Comment below if there's any that have helped you through a season of, of pain or darkness. If something that I have said today has encouraged you or spoke to your heart, please buy a Bible. So many of you asked me where to start. Start in Matthew 1, read to, the, read to the end of the New Testament, and then start over with the Old. Start a Bible plan. I read the ESV Bible. A lot of you guys asked me that. The CSB, the NIV, there's so many different translations and versions. Some people like to read the message. That's mainly thought for thought. That's a lot easier for some people to understand, but I kind of like to go with one that's word for word from the translations of the Greek. So to go back to that hard question that London asked me in the car, if someone takes their life, do they get to go to heaven? And I told her that we don't know what happens in those last few moments of a person's life. That is between them and God. We can never be the judge of that. The Bible says that that is a sin, it is a sin, but it's no different a sin than any other. And, and we all sin every day. I don't believe just one sin will send a person to hell. And especially if they're a Christ follower and they have lived their lives honoring the Lord and following the Lord, I do believe that somebody can have a season of darkness and a moment of severe, severe darkness and weakness and can commit that sin in that moment. And I do believe that, that death by suicide, while it is a sin and there is a way out, that that is a sin that can be forgiven by Christ and we can't be the judge of that. And Paul says in Romans 8:38 and 39, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He is the ultimate judgment of a person's soul. John Piper, he gives a good analogy of the final act in someone's life. He said, now imagine I get in a huge fight with my wife and I say ugly things to her and I, I slam the door and I leave in this anger and, and anger is a sin and I leave in anger and I dart out the door and I'm speeding down the road and I, I wrap my car around a telephone pole. Am I gonna be judged on my last act of sin and be sent to hell? Or is God gonna look at my entire life and is God gonna have compassion? Is God gonna, we, we will stand before God and we will be judged for everything that we have ever done. But I don't believe that God will judge you on that final sin. The, the real question is, was that person who, who died by suicide, were they a follower of the Lord? Did they believe in Jesus? Did they give themselves to Christ? I think that's the question. I don't think it's the sin that's the question of whether or not they will they will be in heaven or hell. I think it's, were they a believer? Did Christ know them? Did Christ know their heart? You know, the Bible talks about how David, David was a man after God's own heart. He committed terrible sin, but God loved him, and God forgave him, and God brought him through, and God brought him to eternity. That's a hard question to answer, and I know everybody wants to believe that all their loved ones are in heaven but God is the ultimate judge of our character and of our heart and of our mind and of our spirit. And I don't think that's for us to say. So I hope I kind of answered that in, in some sort of way. That's, that's kind of the, the answer that I gave to London. I just want you to know if you're watching this that you matter. God has created you for a purpose. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that is Psalm 139, 14. You have meaning and purpose in this life. Your feelings deceive you. Your feelings deceive you. Your heart deceives you. We have simple hearts. Please don't get into a place of of pain so deep that you don't think that you can get out because there's always a way out. There's always a way out. I'm gonna put um, the number for the suicide prevention hotline right here. It is 800-273-8255. Please use that number or reach out to somebody. And remember, this too shall pass. Sometimes we can feel like we're never gonna get out of something. This too shall pass. This is a season. We go through many seasons, many joyful seasons, many painful seasons, many seasons of waiting. Life is hard but God is good. And I'm praying his peace and comfort over each of you as you go into this week. Remember that you are chosen, fearfully and wonderfully made. God has created you. He knit you together in your mother's womb and he has a purpose for your life. Please don't lose heart. Please don't lose hope. Open up your Bible, grab some of that hope, read, follow Christ. You will have more peace and rest. You will be pulled out of anxiety and pulled out of depression. You will be restored and redeemed. Guard your heart, guard your mind, and Reach out if you are needing help. There is no shame in admitting weakness. There is no shame. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My power is made perfect in your weakness.
God's power is made perfect in your weakness. Allow him to work. Allow him to work. Don't try to be stronger than you are. Let him be your strength. You guys are chosen. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. I know, I know this topic was not as joyful as some, but it's important. And it's important for us to talk about. Don't feel shame. Don't feel shame. Reach out to your friends and ask for help. Allow God to be your strength. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye.